stay on the goddamn path and be careful. Because if you start to mess around and you deviate, especially if you know that you're deviating, things are not going to go well for you. And that idea is everywhere. And, and I think it's a right. I think the idea is right because there aren't that many ways of doing things right. And there's a lot of ways of doing things wrong. And if you do things wrong, the consequences of doing them wrong can be truly catastrophic. You know, one of the things I learned from reading Viktor Frankl first, but then Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who I think did a deeper job, and Vaclav Havel thought the same thing. These people were very much trying to understand what happened in places like Nazi Germany and in the Soviet Union. Solzhenitsyn's Gulag Archipelago is a particularly good analysis of what happened in the Soviet Union. And his conclusion, and it's a 2100 page conclusion, and it's like hammered home with a hammer. It's, it's a book that everyone should read. First of all, what he does is document just how terrible things were in the Soviet Union between 1919 and 1959. And no matter how terrible you think they were, unless you know the stories, they were a lot more terrible than that. And they were terrible personally, because everyone lied. They were terrible in families, because two out of five people were government informers. They were terrible among friends because no one could tell each other the truth. They were terrible socially because the whole system was corrupt and ran on slave labor. And they, they were terrible philosophically because the doctrine of man upon which the state was founded was hopeless and nihilistic. And they were murderous, destructive, and genocidal. They got it wrong at every single level of analysis simultaneously. And the question is, why? And Solzhenitsyn's answer, and, and to some degree Viktor Frankl's answer as well, and Vaclav Havel, and I would say also Nelson Mandela and Gandhi, they all ended up in the same conceptual sphere. And the answer was because individual people lived crooked lives because individual people swallowed lies and spoke them and didn't stand up for the truth. And the corruption that spread from each individual pulled the entire state mechanism into that corruption and made everything into hell. You know, there are other theories, obedience, right? That's kind of the Milgram idea. It's easy to make human beings obedi obedient to people in authority. And I've explored that idea quite a bit with regards to what happens, happened, for example, in the Nazi concentration camps. And yes, you can set circumstances up so that people are likely to be obedient to orders that are pathological. There's no doubt about that. And yes, sometimes that's indicative of the weakness of their character, but that's not the issue. And the idea that what happened in Nazi Germany was because a population of good people listened to a tiny minority of bad people, that's really not a good theory. The Nazi ethos was there at every single level of the social organization, right from the familial all the way up to the leadership. It was the same thing all the way up and all the way down and the same thing in the Soviet Union. And I just cannot see how after the 20th century, anybody with any sense could possibly not see that as true. And I think that there's a line in the Old Testament, you know, that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And I can tell you one of the things that frightened me badly was the realization from reading Solzhenitsyn and then a variety of other things that I was reading at the same time that Dostoevsky as well, because he makes the same point. He said that a human being is not only responsible for everything they do, but for everything that everyone else does. Now, you know, that's crazy. And he was an epileptic and a mystic, and that's a crazy thing to say. But it's also, there's something about it that's true. Because if you were better, the people around you would be less worse than they are. And if you were good enough, you don't know how much better the people around you would be. There's this idea too, you know, that Christ took the sins of the world unto himself. That's a complicated idea, man. I wrestled with that one for a very long time, but I think I figured out at least in part what it means. It's something like the realization of complete humanity. To take the sins of the world unto yourself is to realize that, is to understand the Nazi concentration camp guard, because that person is human and so are you. And so if you can't see you in that, then you don't know who you are. And if you can see you in that, well, then you've started to take the sins of the world onto yourself because you've actually started to take responsibility for those terrible things. You know, I think it's the motif of the, the motto of the Holocaust Museum in Washington. We must never forget, that's close. And I think you can't remember what you don't understand. You will forget what you don't understand. And the question is, well, what are you supposed to remember about the Holocaust? It was a historical event that six million people died. That's not what's to remember. What's to remember is that's what people can do. And you're one of them. And if you don't understand that you could do that, then you don't know who you are.